What's up, y'all? This is DJ Friction. I'm looking to start your own radio show? Come on over to Spreaker.com. That's right, I said it. Come on over to Spreaker.com and uh, listen to hundreds and thousands of radio shows, or you can start your own all for free. That's right, I said it. Come on over to Spreaker.com right now. They'll get you set up with our 30 minute free broadcasting account. Mind you, you can broadcast 30 minutes as many times as you want for free. Spreaker.com is very exact. Other price packages are available. Let them know that the Latin Roof Radio Show sent you and get your radio show started today. This, this, this is iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio makes you want to move. When you have a great melody, a song can last forever. Instantly connected. I love it when the beat goes. <laughs> Radio is the way I get to you. The biggest song, the biggest artist, are in one place. I Heart Radio. I'll see you there. Are you in need of some love advice, money advice, or career advice? If so, simply purchase your reading via irishpsychic.net. Readings are delivered within 24 hours and can give you all the details you require. Tarot, Pendulum, Crystal Ball, the answers all lie within. Readings start from as little as three euros, two pounds, four dollars. Log on today and see what's in store for you. IrishPsychic.net for all your psychic needs. It's now time for the weekly rundown right here on iHeartRadio with your host, DJ Friction. Michael, the Professor Benson, and Kevin, the Iceman, Tapey. Don't go anywhere because it's about to go down right now. Yeah, 102.DLG Radio. We are broadcasting live. I'm sorry for that, guys. We had a little bit of technical issues, but we are here on this very special Tuesday Evening and joining me live right now are my partners in crimes, and I want to let you know right now we are not responsible for any words that comes out of the professor's mouth tonight. But joining me is no other than the troublemaker himself, the professor Michael Pinson, and our good friend Kevin, the Ice Man Tapey. What's going on, guys? What the are you talking about? What? What do you mean? What I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Watching any words that come out of my <laughs> mouth tonight. Listen, my goodness. So, so take... should we start? Should we start off with the views of the host do not necessarily reflect the views of 102. Point DLG Radio? You See, got it, Kevin. You are the man. Go ahead. There you go. <laughs> Kevin, you got Ke- it. Kevin is now going to warn you about this broadcast this evening. I think Kevin just known me a little bit longer than you, uh, TJ. A little bit. <laughs> you know what we should do? We should lay that to track, and you should play that followed by the ice bucket challenge. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that ah, ah, ah. It's okay. Ah. You do that. You do that pretty well. Are you the one who was on that video, man? Well, you told me everything you I know. The voiceover. Yeah, you taught me everything I know. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we are broadcasting live on this very special evening. You checked in to the weekly rundown, and we got a lot of things to talk about. But what do you say, Kevin? I was going to say, just so you guys, if you're listening tonight and you're like, wait a minute, it's not Tuesday, you're okay. The calendar's not lying to you. It's Wednesday. It's all right. Did I just say Tuesday? Yes. Oh, my bad. (laughs) It's all right. Yeah, Yeah, we were supposed to broadcast yesterday, but of course, you know, I had to work till 2 o'clock in the morning, so that wasn't going to happen. Worked till 2 o'clock and got up at 8 and went and took his girlfriend downtown. I love it. Took her downtown? She, She actually... She actually picked me up when she took me downtown. Oh. <laughs> but you're too tired. I am very tired. You can't tell in my face? Uh, you don't look tired. What's that? You don't look tired. I don't look tired? Uh-uh. Oh, you don't know me well enough then, I guess. <laughs> I've been at the beach getting burned, so. Oh. Yeah, you need some tan. Look at me. I'm all red. I know. And that's not from you getting a tan. That's from you holding your breath. No, it would, uh... <laughs> And you might, maybe so. <laughs> you never know, but uh, the uh, overcast, you know how the skies are. When the skies are overcast, that's when you get burnt the worst. So yeah, we no. were there for about 30 minutes, and I said, maybe I need to put some sunblock on. That's what happens to us light-skinned people. 
<laughs> Are you white or, or what? I'm half. I look, so listen, I'm half Irish and half Puerto Rican. I'm, I'm both to be proud of to be both on both sides of the. Well, fence. I'm Danish and Italian. <laughs> you would think you would <laughs> think with my Italian blood I wouldn't burn, but we're actually true Sicilian. The family is so it, they're very like true Sicilians are light skinned. All right, so moving on. We don't want Mike to hog the, the the station tonight like he usually does every single week. So we're gonna go ahead. Well, let you know that, don't, that, that you uh, Irish Puerto Ricans. Oh wait a minute! This burned. is supposed to be your week off. It's supposed to be me and Kevin tonight. That's right. <laughs> it was supposed to be Mike's night off, but I guess he went to see Fast and Furious Seven last night. That's right. Oh, you did. Mm. Mm. Well, we'll talk about that later. Actually, it went Monday night just in case DJ Friction changed his mind again. Yeah. I haven't well, seen it. I, I haven't seen any of the Fast and Furious movies. I have to admit. Oh, they're pretty good. Last night was pretty good. You did you you enjoy it? I mean, Monday night show that. Yeah, I actually had some had people a lot of said it was kind of stupid. It wasn't. We went as good. We went to the seven forty five show. I mean, there was maybe ten people in the theater on Monday night, so it was ten people. Yeah, it was. That's it was a, a good. Damn shame. I mean, they sold out over the weekend, but <laughs> Mondays are usually pretty slow. So yeah, they sold out over the weekend, but it tells you that Monday. Sucked. Yep. Monday's a good time to go to the movies. Exactly. When you don't want to, have, and I had to I had to go into the XL theater, so you know it's the extra large theater. Yeah. That's so, so his to, head could get in. That's right. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah. the same. I, was waiting, I, I said thing. that for a reason to see if it would hit on that. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Man. I'm glad somebody in his room was smart enough to pick up on that. This show is gonna go to hell already, guys. <laughs> but speaking of which, before we actually get started with the show. Uh, we'll let you know that today's show is brought to you in part by our great friends at Freedom. If you guys haven't had the chance yet to check out Freedom, head on over to our official website. Uh, if you head on over to our official website, you guys got your own podcast, radio show, you, you got a show about gaming, anything like that, Freedom will hook you up today. Uh, they actually pay you to broadcast if you got a gaming channel. So maybe wow. something Good. that you want to check into, uh, Kevin, because I know Kevin right now. Uh, is starting uh, his blogging uh, technique, and maybe he should get into video, like vlogging instead of blogging, doing some video stuff. He can actually get paid for doing some of that stuff. I have thought about that. That is something I am considering. Uh, I need to. I need to uh, understand how podcasting and video casting and all that stuff works, and I want to figure out how to edit stuff together so that it looks professional and sounds professional. I don't want it to look like, you know, just some hack with a headset. I want it to be, you know, something something that you could be proud of. You know, you watch it and go, wow, that, that guy put some time into it. I just want to let you know you just offended Mike by calling him a hack. <laughs> 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 I'm just messing. Look at his face. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? It's okay. No, but no, seriously, on an all serious note, uh, Kevin, tell everybody about your, your blog uh, thing you got going on right now. Well, I, it, recently I've been I've been thinking a lot about cruising. It's something that I like to do. It's something that I've enjoyed doing, and I've done 21 of them. And not that I'm an expert, but you know, there are people out there who don't necessarily want to talk to an expert or hear from an expert about cruising. They want to hear from somebody who just cruises, somebody who does it for the fun of it, doesn't look for you know all the little bad things or you know things that go wrong. So I started a blog called Seaworthy, S E A Worthy. And uh, it's it's a Wix page, so right now it's it's kind of hard to find. The best way to find it is through my Twitter page, which is at Seaworthy J A X at Seaworthy Jax. You can hook up on Twitter, and the link is there for the website. You can also go to our Facebook page, which is Seaworthy, and you can find it. Or if you can't find it at all for some reason, at Tapey K on Twitter, we will get me. Or hit me through the DLG page, and I'll or the DLG fa Facebook page, and I'll get there. But so far, I've posted you know several articles about cruising and about um, what's going on in the cruising world. And it's also a place where if you have a question or you're not sure about something, drop me a line, and I'll answer it for you. Um, I've got quite a few people I know that have worked for cruise lines or work for cruise lines, and I also know quite a few people that are experts in other areas like travel insurance and passport stuff and if I don't know it then I know someone that does exactly. so give it a look see and see what you think now so you know Kevin you are part of the family here so you know you can advertise your blogs and stuff on the show plus you know you can go on over to our radio page and let people know about it too I mean okay they'll, they'll be shy about it I mean you're part of the family okay. too I think I think we need to make him an admin too on the that that page 
so he mm -hmm. can go in and do what he needs to do about posting. Actually, YouTube. should he uh, be able to use the Nextcast uh, program? What's up? The Nextcast uh, program? Next, software? Nextcast is for music. I mean, uh, play music. What's our uh, software? You're Explit? talking about the Xsplit? Yeah, the Xsplit software. Well, yeah, that was free to us for a little while during the demo, but we got to pay for that now. Well, I'm sure you can. <laughs> I'm sure you can make some things happen. Well, well, let's I'm just let's keep it simple for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he's trying to he's trying to get into writing first, and then he wants to start right. doing his own podcast. I know, and I know. stuff. So yeah, right. well, we're gonna be here to help him out. I'm not gonna let that. I'm not gonna leave him stranded by himself. Would I look like <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah. I sure did leave him stranded. So, mm -hmm. so the first the first article was about water parks at sea, and what you can expect to uh, see on ships in the future, and what you can well, the future's coming up, and there are some crazy things going on in water parks uh, on board cruise ships. Starting in 2020, there's going to be a, a, a pretty radical design on one of the Mediterranean shipping company ships that they haven't released the details yet but suffice to say there's a lazy river there's kind of a, a waterfall kind of thing there's some kind of thrill water ride so <clears throat> I'll be interested to see what they have and then the last article we did was or I did was about river cruising up the Mississippi which is something not many people think about doing mm -hmm. well speaking of lazy uh, <laughs> professor knows a, a lot about being lazy right professor <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I got, I got to jump to Mike's defense here. I've known Mike a long time, and he's pretty entrepreneurial, and he's, you know, he's he pretty is. much anything but lazy. So, no, he know, is. I've known him. I've known him to work several different irons in the same fire. But listen, I got to pull his chain because for the before you came on to work on this show, every single week he was dogging me week after week after week. So it's not gonna come back at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. So uh, again, if you guys want to go on over and show uh, Kevin the Iceman, take me some love. Go check out his blogs, man. And uh, hopefully, we can get him started, get him running on his own uh, podcast, and he can start catching the attention of the wide world audience. You know what I think they should do, uh, Kev, with the with the water park thing? What's that? I think, should, I think should they should have at least one ramp that goes over the side of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't come back. <laughs> exactly, kind of like that pirate plank. You know, you walk the plank. Oh, yeah, you, you don't act right. You gotta walk the plank. I've met some people that the crew would probably like to put on that ride too. And that would be pretty cool. You guys, now, they do. Nuts. They do have a. Sh they do have a slide that goes out over the ship, and uh -huh. when you get out over the water, the tube is clear. Uh -huh. So if you're thinking about it, you can look down and see the water. So. But it doesn't drop you into the ocean. Although I'm sure well, the crew would like to do that. Well, you could people. actually you could actually put a drop gate where the when certain people got to a certain oh point that, that gate just drops and they go down. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm sure there are people they'd like to do that too. Yeah, I'm sure there is. The last cruise. You guys are not right at all. What do you at mean? All. I'm, I'm just saying you guys are not right. The, what are you guys are going to hell? And I know it's not going to be Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, but I just want to go ahead and let you guys know uh, next week there's not going to be any uh, broadcast because uh, Monday I'm out of here on uh, our cruise to uh, to the islands, baby. <laughs> and, and I and you know what? I will be watching for you because you can sail on sailing out of Port Canaveral. There's a webcam, and sailing mm -hmm. into Nassau, there's a webcam. I'll send you the links, and and I'll be the one to uh, I'll I'll be the naked guy. Wait, uh, I'm not gonna have any windows. <laughs> no, but you can, you can go up on deck. <clears throat> Shake your no, thing. Yeah. Shake no, nudity, at a certain point, nudity is allowed and available. Well, that's if I'm not in the dining room or I'm feeding my face already when the ship sails. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking nudity. You're talking. We're talking nudity, and he's talking feeding his face. What does that go with? Priorities, man. Priorities. Yeah, right? Yeah. The girl feeding me. I, I That's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm trying to keep it clean. Anyways. No, I got that. <laughs> yeah. I knew that's where you were going. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but, yeah, so we're, there will be no broadcast next week. Uh, probably Friday we'll, we'll come back with the uh, – just depends on how tired I am and stuff. Uh, I might do a show Friday night for the music show, and then Sunday I'll be back with the morning show. But then these wonderful guys will be back uh, again next Tuesday with me, so we'll have probably stories to tell, and uh, hopefully I won't embarrass myself on the ship with videos and stuff and 
all that good nonsense. Because I am just doing a lot of videos. Just take your selfie stick. Well, the girl, yeah, the, the, the girl has uh, the selfie stick, so we'll see what happens. The what? <laughs> you know what the selfie stick is? Where you attach your phone to this big stick that expands out and you can snap pictures? Oh, the selfies. Yeah, and if you have to use a selfie stick, it's not a real selfie, buddy. What? That's <laughs> cheating. That's cheating. Listen, my arm is long enough I can take a picture. That's cheating. It's okay. We can't help it. You're Irish Puerto Rican and you have short arms. You can't help that, but you don't have to cheat. I'm sorry that I'm like this. Why don't you lay down and use yeah. your feet? Your legs are long. No, it's bad arm. enough. I can't. Me and the girlfriend are talking about this, or the fiance. We, I can't even bend my legs to a certain angle before I start bitching and moaning. <laughs> Somebody has to be the flexible one out of this relationship, but it sure is me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, let, I'm gonna let that one just slide right you on me by. Both. You and me both. <laughs> oh lord. Anyway, so uh, let's get into. Uh, we have an announcement that we want to make to everybody, and of course, I let these guys know what was going on. Uh, we've been mentioning. Well, I should I say I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes for the past uh, few weeks, even probably about a month and a half or so. And I'm finally happy to announce to everybody that as of today, you can listen to us right now. Uh, we have now just signed a deal with uh, TuneIn Radio. So you can now catch us not only on iHeartRadio, not only can you catch us on Spreaker, but now you can catch us audio-wise on TuneIn Radio. So we're very, very happy to be part of the TuneIn family uh, starting today. So tune in! Exactly. You know, if you bug somebody enough, amazing things happen. They get tired of listening to you, and they just give up. And they let you do what you want to do. <laughs> I like to think of it as they have good taste. That's what they have. They have good taste. Yeah, listen, I, I was going back and forth with them for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. You pressed them all. You, I, you, you, I got the emails to prove it. You were all over it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I am. I, I'm I used very, to say, people I'm used to ask me, people used to ask me, well, how, you know, how, how do I get a job here? How do I get a job here? I said, first of all, if you call me more than once, you don't get a job here. Mm. I said, but if you come by every now and then and nicely talk to me and, you know, just kind of inquire, mm. I'll remember your face and who you are. And, you know, I know I kind of know that you're looking. Mm. I'll, I'll call you. You won't have to call me. Mm. I'll let you know when there's a job available. Or it so depends on how short her skirt is. No, uh-uh. Not with me. Hey, Kevin, Kevin is on the, on the right, uh, right path. No, it's it's not like uh, somebody coming in for a loan and lending over the counter and what we call a titty loan, but uh, we we, we don't just hire females because they you know they they look nice or they oh, look I do a certain way. <laughs> yeah, dis <laughs> discrimination, huh? I brought you discriminate? You, on. you discriminate? Yeah, you, you came hired in, me. Didn't you, you came in here with your flashy skirt and I hired, and I brought you on. Oh, man. Once Kevin, again, the views of the host do not necessarily, necessarily. reflect the views of 102.DLG Radio. <laughs> oh, just messing Kevin, around. Kevin, what did you do? Show him my, my picture of me in a skirt or something? Yes. Hello. <laughs> you remember and that? You sparkled. You yeah, sparkled. I did. sparkled. That shirt even, just turned me on last week. <laughs> I had all the guys looking at me. They were, yeah. running, they were running so far away, and all the girls were like... I don't know if they were aiming, looking for your mouth, or looking at your, your behind. Oh, no, sure. man. I got sexy legs for a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you're okay? I know. Yeah, really, fine. you choke. You were between a burp and a choke. I thought I thought Kevin was going to pass out for a minute. No, I'm all right. <laughs> oh, you guys are nuts. All right, so let's go ahead and actually get into the show before this hell. The show goes to hell again this week, and uh, iHeartRadio decides to take us off the air. <laughs> It's okay, because we got tune in, right? <laughs> oh, anyways. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and talk. Oh, actually, we're this week we're going to get a little bit more serious on a serious note. So all the funniness is out the window right now, until Mike messes it up again. <laughs> uh, but no, we, we all were thinking that this week we wanted to touch on a very, very sensitive subject. And I want to let these guys actually go ahead and get started uh, on everything that's happening. I'm going to go show some love to our good friend, uh, Brew Monkey, who just uh, joined us over on the JustCastLive.tv uh, chat room, so thanks for coming by, Coot. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's go ahead and get the show started, and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it to you guys to get started. I'm gonna step away for a second, so go ahead, go right ahead, guys. 
All right, Mike, go ahead and start her off. What's Walter's last name? Scott. And what did Mr. Walter Scott do? Walter Scott used to be in the Coast Guard. He was a resident of, what, North Charleston, South Carolina. He was recently stopped by the police in North Charleston for having a tail light out on his vehicle. That was my question. What did he what did he what did what did he actually do? From what I understand, he had a tail light out on his vehicle. He was pulled over. At that point, he was asked to get out of the vehicle. He got out of the vehicle. And then if you watch the video, there is a rather heated discussion and a scuffle at which point one or both of the either the police lunged at him or Scott lunged at the police something is seen flying away from the policeman back and to the right and then Mr. Scott proceeds to run off at which point the officer I believe his name is Sager shoots him eight times as he's running away so and he's uh, it, it's unclear from to me it's unclear from the video exactly what happened although it looked a little bit it definitely looked odd. Let's put it that way. Well, when uh, DJ Friction gets back, I'll have him go to the control board and go to YouTube. Because uh, I would do it, but he would probably get very pissed off at me for messing with the producer's tools. Yeah. So, uh, there's a, on YouTube, when you pull up Walter Scott, and you go to that page, it has about six different videos of uh, uh, interviews, of, uh, of footage... But it also has the the footage of a, a gentleman uh, out of North Charleston. I think a military, a guy in the military, actually got full footage of the point of him running from the cop, at, at, from the point where the cop supposedly tased him, and him running. Yeah. We're showing him, shooting him six times, eight times. Well, I thought it was six, but it's eight. As it's you said, eight. Maybe. Yeah, and I don't, uh, I don't think he was actually ever tased. As a matter of fact, the cop says on the he the tried to take the taser. Right, when he's calling into 911 dispatch, or when he's calling into police dispatch, he says that, nice shirt, he says to uh, he says to the dispatcher that he reached for his taser. Well, if you watch the video, I, I watched a video today where a CNN expert is looking at the video and right. he's analyzing it frame by frame. And, you know, it appears that when the second officer arrives, Officer Sager leaves the, the victim, goes back to whatever fell out or was thrown out or knocked out or whatever, picks something up, and then drops something by the victim. Mm -hmm. But it's unclear what it is. It, it what he dropped? To me, it doesn't look like a taser. It looks like, it almost looked like handlebars, very short handlebars, but I don't think that's what it was. And mm -hmm. then the other officer picks something up, but it's not clear if it's the same thing that the officer dropped so it's very confusing I mean the whole story is 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 relatively confusing to me if, because no matter what I it depends on which side you read or, or what you think you might know or what expertise you think you have but it's very confusing there's a few questions that I have that I would like to kind of have answered but we won't we'll never be able to answer them unless the victim the person who was with the victim in the car is found and 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 they they get their his testimony as to why Walter Scott got out of the car and ran. Well, there's there's a theory on that. The theory is that he owes eighteen thousand dollars in back child support, and he thought they were coming for him, so that's why he got out. That's why he tried to run. That's what I understand too. Is uh, I, from what I got from it too, is saying that yeah, he owned child support. But um, but what I'm saying is, until they really get ver verbal confirmation from that guy who was sitting next to him in that car as to why he ran. I would and like he to hear may, what he... What's that? He may not even know either. I mean, I think the only person that knows why he ran is dead, so... I don't so, think the guy in the car even knows why he got out to run. So the point being is... He ran... Okay. Last time I checked, running from a police officer did not constitute eight shots in the back. Well, okay, so I watched the Period. videos. That's murder. I watched the videos, and I, this is what I got from it. And because the young man who oh, the videoed it, on YouTube, yeah, you know, he's got like a whole bunch of clips. Yeah, yeah. The young man came forward. At first, he was really, really scared to come forward and say anything concerning the case. He was just kind of, kind of, let it go. 
Uh, but the the young man said, "Hey, you know what? He felt bad for the family. He thought it was right to to go ahead and say something." And some people think he's crazy because he actually went to the police and and told the police, "Hey, listen, um, I'm getting text messages uh, that you know this is what happened." Uh, and their reporter was asking the young gentleman. I, I don't know the gentleman's name by heart or anything like that, but the reporter said, "Hey." Did you see um, the police officer shoot the kid, of course, uh, the guy, whatever? And he said, yeah. And he asked him, do you know why he shot him? And they says that the cop didn't really give that much warning, telling him to really stop. He just pulled that gun, shot him, shot, shot him. Uh, I think it was like, how many times? Eight. Eight times. Um, and then it looked like... And like you said, you guys said that they did some analysis and stuff like that. And they zoomed in. They said, it, quote unquote, it was a taser. But what got me was, if it was a taser, whatever it was, why did the cop, after he shot the gentleman, go back to go pick up the, the, the taser, whatever it was, and then drop it by the body? I know, I know. That's what well, I saw, too. He, because he said he went for the taser. He never said he got the taser. Got, right. But, but here's, here's my thing. I want to go back to something Mike said. Running from the cops doesn't get you shot. You're right. That that shouldn't be a reason to get shot. However, in a lot of these cases, there's a break point where if you do something, something else is going to happen, and that something else isn't always a good thing. And and I sat on a jury a number of years ago where um, these two young men tried to steal a car from an old woman, and of course they were shocked when she came out of her house with a shotgun and started shooting at them. But nonetheless, they, they ran down the street. Well, mm -hmm. one Actually, the one guy tried to steal the car. He got shot at. His friend was standing on a corner, had no idea what was happening. All he saw was his friend run by, and he ran from the cops. And the kid got on the stand and goes, look, in the neighborhood I'm from, you're taught not to trust the cops. I'm like, okay, I can buy that. But at some point, you have to think, if this guy doesn't struggle with the guy or make an aggressive move or knowing that cops might be a little trigger happy in that particular section of the world because I, I read mike earlier say something about you know the cops in that part of town are crooked i don't know about that but he might and if the guy doesn't run doesn't struggle doesn't fight just does what the cop wants him to do he gets a ticket for a busted taillight he leaves and he's not dead okay so, so here's hold, the hold, other hold, thing hold too. one second dj uh the place in north charleston south carolina where i was born and raised uh, as a child uh, growing up, uh, different points of my life, uh, are very aggressive. In the mid uh, 90s, starting on, starting from about 1989, 1990, a new sheriff came into town. They had many, many murders in that area, and the the police were very aggressive. The first week I moved back to Charleston from from New Orleans, I'm going down the road, and what do I see? I see an apprehension in the middle of the highway on Dorchester Road of a police officer, unmarked car, has a car stop, pulls the guy out. He's face down in the middle of the road. Another police officer is come, uh, bordering the other police officer. He gets out, comes over. One's, one's got his hand in his back, cuffing him, and the other one's kicking him. I didn't see any resistance there then, okay? That these are just instances, and this was, I think, in around 19, probably late summer 1989 when I moved back. And, and I'm watching this, I'm like, wow, okay, and I just left New Orleans, and New Orleans is rough. And you expect to see it there, because it is, it, it is all out uh, uh, banging time. It's a time, time where it's nothing but banging. So I see this, and then I, and then I heard many, many stories since then. And in the mid '90s, it was it was really 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 crazy out there too, uh, but they also were cited for profiling. That's where the whole uh, some of the profiling instances came into to play and so on. So, Charleston is a very racially charged city. North Charleston is no different. I went to the first elementary school that was racially uh, crossed. segregated. Well, segregated, but racially crossed from the segregation. Desegregated, right. Yeah. Uh, 
But when I'm saying racially crossed, from the railroad tracks where all blacks lived on one side of the tracks, all whites lived on the other. And then the school was in between, and then they all were uh, uh, desegregated into our, our elementary school. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of different sides of that city and that town. And I've also been to the hangman tree in, in the middle of Charleston, over by Citadel. There's like a hangman corner. It's a hanging tree, what they called it. Right in the middle of the road, and they they, they they never cut that tree down. But it's an old oak, and they say that that you know they used to hang slaves in the middle of the uh, in the uh, square there. That was a square, yeah. and they left the tree. Is that true? I don't know. I mean, it's you know it's just lore and history that you hear about. Yeah. When you well, see I, a I tree. Know, yeah, I know. Back in the late 1860s, there were hanging trees. There were right. trees all over all over the South, and and that was a. A thing that would happen now as, as far as but but even still you know I of course for those of you listening and not watching I'm white and I've had you know I've been stopped late at night by a cop in in Jacksonville Beach here in Florida I was mm -hmm. on my way home from work and uh, it was about 3 3 30 in the morning I'm driving down 3rd Street toward my house and a policeman pulls in behind me and then pulls me over I, I put my hands on the dashboard like my father, who used to be a policeman, told me to do. And I, and I waited until he came up beside the car. And he was very combative, very um, suspicious, and asked me, you know, what, what, what I was doing out this late at night. I told him I just got off work. And why'd you put your hands on the dashboard? I'm like, so you can see him because it's dark. And he said, well, you're trying to hide something. I'm like, no, I'm not trying to hide anything, oh, sir. Wow. What can I do for you? So he says license and registration. So I gave it to him. And about that time, another car, another cop pulls up, and it's a uh, of course, it's an older cop. He gets out of the car and he he says the cop's name and he goes, "That's not the guy we're looking for." And the guy says, "Well, I'm going to run his license anyway." And the older cop says, "He's not the guy we're looking for." And, and I politely said, "Officer, if you'd like to run my license, I'm I'm not opposed." And he ran my license, came back, gave me the license back, and said, you're free to go. The old officer comes up and goes, I'm sorry, but we're looking for someone who tried to kidnap someone driving a car similar to yours. And I said, no problem. I said, not at all. I said, you're doing your job, and left. But if I had done something stupid, it could have gone another way. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Hey, always uh, re always I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, Coot says uh, he's, from, he's Canadian. Um, but listen, uh, cops... These days, you know, there are good cops out there, and there's bad. There's cops bad out apples there. in every every bushel. So. Exactly. There's cops out there who are meaning to do well for the citizens, and then we got those bad apples out there. That if if you look at today's society, there's where there's always going to be trouble. There's always other ways to go going about different situations. You don't need to go out there and harm somebody. Getting back to what happened um, with the gentleman. Um. Yeah, he ran, but he didn't have any type of weapon that was shown. Um, there could have been other ways he could have stopped the gentleman. Yeah, you chase him down, run him down, you know, to stop him. You don't need to shoot somebody because you know because they're running. Well, you know, I'm a I'm a concealed carry weapons carrier, legally, have my license, and. When 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 you when or if you have to ever pull a firearm on somebody, it should be def it should be for only one reason, to defend your life, not to be the aggressor, but to be de the defender. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. The only reason you pull a gun out is to use it, and that is if you fear your life is in jeopardy. You from what the footage I saw, I can never believe that that police officer felt like his life was in jeopardy. Especially when the person is running from him twice, not once, yeah. twice. Yeah. Well, and of course we don't we don't know the whole story, but but you know the one no. the, some, the footage I watched did show a struggle, did show somebody lunging at somebody. So it's it's difficult to know. Plus, we don't know the conversation that was going on either. We don't know what was going on being said no, between and, the two. And and you know what, you're one hundred percent right, Kevin. But when he turned around and ran. His back was to the police officer, and that's my whole point yeah. here. His back was to the police officer. The police officer was no longer in jeopardy of his life. Right. I.e., different than the occasion that took place in Illinois where the police officer was being lunged at and approached. Right. 
Well, you know, and again, it, it, here in here in Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office did a program where they they allowed local they allowed local people. It was mostly African American pastors who attended the event, but they allowed them to be a police officer for a day in one of their training courses where it was, you know, good or bad, you know, do I shoot or not, shoot, sh shoot or not shoot. Mm -hmm. And even they came out and said, it's a very difficult decision. And without actually putting yourself in that position and being in the shoes of that officer, you don't, I'm not defending the officer by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying there's probably more to the story than we know. Oh, there always and is. And there again, is. I think if the guy doesn't get out of the car and run, and just takes the ticket, you know. He's a, he's, I mean, there's, he's a, there's, it, there's a lot of events that led right up to this point. See, but the guy, Walter Scott, he is, like you said earlier, he thought he would be a stop for child support. But I'm tired of hearing about all these people getting who, who, are, who are stopped, and all their friends and relatives are saying they're just stand-up people and everything. Man, you owe child support, pay your damn child support. Mm-hmm. You have a kid, and you, you would you wouldn't be you. you put yourself in that situation if that's the reason. Yeah. Okay. Now, but what his family is saying that he he took people off the streets and helped people, and he sounded like a square person. Well, you know what? If you're that good of a person in square, I'm sure you would have got got dealt with in the, in the right way as far as your child support went. But the you judge probably would have gave you a, you know a leniency. Not only that, but these days people cops will look at you or myself and have. A, have a, a, a image or a view of what they think we are. Oh, of course, we could be the nicest people in the world, but to them, they can say, "Oh, well, this guy, he's he's a drug addict, or he's he's selling drugs just because of the car you're driving in, or you're out at a certain amount of time at night." They could probably think that you know Kevin's out there late at night trying to prank up, you know, God forbid. You know how many times like I've that. been pulled over because right. of the car I was, and I I know for the fact of the car I was driving. Denise and I have had a lot of cars in my life since we've been married. Lots of cars. And I, I got pulled over three times when I had my prelude, pearl white prelude. Uh, I saw, I mean, I on four fifteen going to Daytona. I was working in Daytona then, mm -hmm. and I got pulled over. Car passes me, I get pulled over. Because once they once they initiate, they have to pull somebody over when they when they when they flag. Once they've got them on radar, they have to pull somebody over at that point. Yeah. And it just happened to be me. And you know what? I, I, I said, you know, told the highway patrol officer, you gave me a ticket for something somebody else did. And, you know, you're going to have to deal with it. I said, but that's wrong. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hey, Kevin, do me a favor. Going over to Just Cast Live, we, they got people typing in the chat. So you yeah, I can't. Wanna... I have an authentic error. I can't, I can't get into the chat. Yo, I won't let you? Okay. All right. No. Uh, and I'll try <laughs> restarting it. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, Bruce says, man beaten. I guess this is a story that happens. A man beaten by police after stealing a horse. Aerial footage of NBC's Bay Area affiliate shows sheriff's deputies using a taser to uh, stun a man and then beating him after allegedly stole a horse. He okay. then goes on to say, one cop got tired of kicking and had to sit down and rest. That's overuse of power. And authority. And uh, Shakira's up in the Spreaker chat. Spreaker chat is here. She said, uh, my dad uh, got followed. She gets He gets followed all the time because of the kind of car that he drives. What kind of car does he drive, Shakira? He has uh Man, I don't even know. It's uh, it's like a like a not a pickup, but like a. It's not because of that mean look. I want to say like a Bronco, time, is some it? type of Bronco, huh? It's not that because he always has a mean look on his face, is it? <sighs> That come uh, that, that came from somebody well, I know. No, no, he has a, a beautiful car. It's no, tinted I know. and stuff. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you know if you pimp your car out a little bit and you take care of your car and you have appreciation for your car, doesn't mean you're doing drugs. Doesn't mean you're selling drugs. It doesn't mean you're a, you're a thug. You know. Like, you know anybody out there is going to pass judgment. Cops are going to pass judgment all the time. And, yeah. You know Denise got stopped in Lake Mary, Florida, because when we bought her, her when she had her black Mustang, we got her dark tint on her windows, mm -hmm. and they pulled her over for her dark tint. And harassed her. Uh, she said it's a navigator. Navigator, yeah, because it's an SUV, and that just so happens to be one of the most one of the more popular vehicles for transportation of narcotics from South Florida to Jacksonville mm -hmm. in Georgia. By the way, just, we're just featured, saying, we're featured on the Just Cast Live site. We're being awesome, featured right now. Awesome. So, so Kevin, uh, 
what what I saw and what I heard from what I could see on that was, in my opinion, it, it was overuse of police power. And and you know you you made a point when he was down. Now I watched the point where he after he shoots him he walks up. He doesn't check him to see if you know he he knows he put about four or five uh, shots in him, at yeah. least. Okay, even though he shot eight times and he hit all eight mm-hmm. times, it never mm-hmm. said. I didn't see anything. So, what I'm going to say here is this. If I just shot somebody eight times, six times, four times, and they're not moving, and they're face down, I'm going to proceed with caution. Yes, I am. But he walks over and he says something to him, and I can't, t- you know, you can't hear it or see what he said to him. And then he picks his, he did, I think he picks his head up or he moves him or something. As he's he, the, he checks for a pulse. On the, on no, the at the second. end he checks for the pulse. Mm. This is when the other cop walked up and they pulled his shirt up and he, he did a pressure bandage. The other cop walks away. Then he checks for pulse after they made the call and there was a units coming. Mm. He checked for the pulse a little bit too late. At that point, that man should have been sat up. He should have been uh, guarded in a guarded uh, position. As far as guarded for his health, not for his crime. Mm-hmm. Especially if he got shot and he knows he was physically shot. It was around the lung area from what I could see in the back. So, okay, let, let, let's take a, let's take a step back for a second. Let's, let's, we're going we're, we're to do the scenario between you and, and Iceman. Okay. And we're going to do it with you first. Let's just say you're the, uh, the officer at that time. Okay. How would you proceed with this stop? Because in my opinion, I think the way the cop went about it was totally screwed up. It was totally wrong. Well, first of all, me, when the guy got out of his car and ran, Mm -hmm. I would have called for backup. I would have let backup know what direction he was running. I would have proceeded with caution because he's out of sight, out of view, first and foremost. I might, uh, because he still had one person in the car. So he takes off in a foot uh, foot race. What if they were both uh, criminals? Now you got the other guys away. I would have secured the other guy and went for him next and let them know what direction he ran in. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have engaged at any point unless unless I was sure. Now he catches up to the guy. They have excuse me. They had some type of altercation right there. Mm-hmm. And then the, the, the he said he, he tried to get his taser, and then he runs at that point. He says something. He says stop, or he probably said stop, or I'll shoot, and started firing. Well, he's running. Now, not that long after, you see cops, the one cop who comes up and the guy, the cop who's helping him. So there were already cops on the way. He could have just went and con- continued to pursue by foot, mm-hmm. got him down. Did whatever he needed to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. His life still was not in jeopardy. Based on what I saw footage-wise, his life was not in jeopardy. Okay, so the footage that I seen was, and maybe you didn't show the whole footage. Maybe you seen the whole footage, and I didn't get to see the whole thing. But from the footage, that, the footage that I seen was uh, him running out of the car, right, taking off, uh-huh. and then next thing I see, he's bypassing a tree. The cop pulls out the gun and shoots him. No, there was there was a little bit more footage, but not no, a lot more was, than that. So, this clip there must was, have been edited in some way. Yeah, there was ahead, a, there was a bit of a struggle there, and there was also, um, like I said, it it's really unclear to me who lunged at who. Yeah, but there was some of that. Now, now what? And that footage was very minimal as far as the struggle goes. <clears throat> now I'm not a, I'm not a uh, I'm not a police officer, but in this case, what I would have done was, you know, once I stopped the car and the guy gets out to run. I'm calling back up and I'm securing the guy in the other car because I don't know if he's armed and I'm not leaving my cruiser. Well, you know, let me so. let me go and let me go back real quick because you said what would I've done? From the point of him stopping him, police officer goes back to his car cuz he had asked him, "Do you have your do you have your license? Do you have your registration?" blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. He goes back to his car, I think with his license. He's he's running a check. Walter gets out of his car. And and they said, when I was watching the video, I said, "Oh man, no, no, you don't. You don't get out when the, when when a police officer goes back there. He says, stay in your. They always tell you to stay, stay in your stay car. In your vehicle. Yeah. Do not get out. Mm-hmm. To the police officer's defense, that was mistake number one on Walter's part. 
Now, at that point of that gentleman trying to get out of his car, I don't know if he called for backup yet, but I would have called for backup right away because now you know you have a potential issue on your hands when he tries to get out of his car. And he gets out of his car and he looks like like he was almost considering running then. And then he gets back in. And then all of a sudden, shuts the door. I mean, what, maybe three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. He bolts. So there's a lot that took place at the beginning that gives us concern for why, you know, like he said, he, you know, his uh, child support. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when they get through, there's a foot chase. He's running through the field and everything. We don't see anything at that point until the camera comes on. So did they have altercation before that where nobody sees footage? I, I, I doubt it. I highly doubt it. And, and listen, and I understand, you know, cops are going to be very wary during stops. You're not going to know what I the mean, exact you're stop going is going to be. You know what? You're going in blind. Yeah, you really you are. are going in blind. And, you know, it's 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 crazy. It's, 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 it's unfortunate that it took place. But my whole point is, I carry a gun. Most of the time I have my gun on me. And... If it came down to getting an altercation and I felt like, you know, the person was aggressing mm -hmm. and I was to the point where I couldn't handle myself or I felt like my life was going to be in jeopardy at that point yeah. and I had to use a gun, that's the last thing I ever want to have to do is pull that gun out. But it's there for my safety if I have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if they turn around and they start running, I'm not pulling my gun out. I'm not shooting at them. They're running away from me. It's no longer a, uh, a stand your ground issue. They're gone. Right? Yeah. Now, something I want to bring up to both of you. Uh, Kevin, I don't know if you heard about it, but we had an issue here in Orlando uh, yesterday or two days ago where a citizen's patrol officer who was a ride-along police officer, uh, basically they call them pay for, uh, pay, pay, pay for pay cops, pay for cop, mm -hmm. where you get to ride along, do ride-along, or mm -hmm. it was a citizen's patrol. I'm not sure what he was. He's like citizen patrol. So what he actually does is he goes... He shoots and kills a guy. It shows him going. Uh, yell, it shows the footage. They said he was going for his his gun, but he thought he was going for his taser, and he actually pulls his gun out and, and shoots and kills the guy. Oh. Okay. I think that was yeah. Florida. I think that was Florida that I heard that on uh, yeah. on the news, or Central Florida, I think, or somewhere in the in the general vicinity of this area, and. I'll have to do more research on it, but I don't, I, you know, I don't know quite what took place there. But I, I guess there's a lot of uh, uh, investigation going on right now about that. And I don't know if the guy he shot is dead or if he's wounded. But to the point of, once again, the person wasn't coming at him. Uh, Bruce says, did, you, did he have to pass an IQ test to get the job? Huh. Yes. We'd like to know, and you're supposed to. I test or IQ test? Actually, there are a battery of tests that you have to take to become a police officer. It's not just a physical training course. You also have to go through mental health screening. You have oh, everything. To go through. everything. And the police, acad the police academy itself is a um, well, uh, is, I, I think, is a test of your own. I think he was talking. I think he was talking about the citizen patrol one. No, no I, I oh. think uh, I think Brew was just trying to be a smartass right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, all right, Brew. Okay. Brew is just the man. See, he, he, he's he's being sarcastic. I know Brew well. <laughs> 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 That's funny. But, That's funny. But in all seriousness, though, it is a good question. How do you become a police officer? Well, here in here in Duval County, it used to be you could become a police officer with a two-year degree. It was a, it was an AA, it was a it was an associate's degree uh, program. Not anymore. Now it's a four-year degree that you have to have to become a police officer, and you have to pass a ton of different you know mental tests and physical tests and all that other stuff. So you don't become a police officer just because you want to. I mean, I forget what the number is, but I think it's like maybe five or ten out of every hundred applicants actually make it to the academy, and out of those, only few yeah. make it through. I don't think you have. I don't think you have to be within a four-year degree. It still may be a two-year degree, and I think uh, there's some other uh, factors that come into play if you, can, if you can get accepted to the academy. Uh, yeah, here it's here it's definitely a four year degree. That that change went in with uh, Sheriff Jim McMillan, who was the sheriff here. Gosh, I remember I remember uh, McMillan for 
Long time. Yeah, 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 McMillan's been a long time ago. As a matter of fact, I flew past him speeding once. <laughs> no, I, I met him. I, I got pulled over by the sheriff. I met him in when we had a uh, national conference for pawnbrokers uh, for Duval. It was Duval, St. John's, uh, Volusia, uh, Orange, and uh, Seminole, and it was held in Jacksonville at a at a hotel. And I, it was a big, it was a conference about uh, pawnbrokers and police on how to interact and, and stuff like that. So uh, he's a nice guy. Yeah, I, I you know the, there's several things about being a police officer that that just really. One reason I wouldn't want to do it is because, first off, you, you never know what kind of a situation you're walking into. You know, I've got a, I've got a very good friend of mine who is a who is an evidence technician here in Jacksonville, and you know he talks all the time about walking into situations you just never know what you're going to get. And of course, domestics are the worst of worst of them because you don't know who the aggressor is. You know, you assume it's the guy, but it's not always the guy that's the aggressor. It could be the woman. You never know. Well, but, you know. Uh, the one thing that you could there's two things you can assume about a traffic stop. If you're in the car being stopped, you can assume that that cop is armed. All right? And if you're the cop, you assume the person in the car is armed. You have to. It's like a gun. You don't, you know, one of those rules of safe gun handling is always assume the gun is loaded. Even well, if you know it's not, assume it is. Well, you know, here's what I worry about. Though I have a legal license to carry a gun, concealed. If I am stopped, when I pull my license out, I have to pull my concealed weapons license out also, to informing the police officer that I am a concealed carry. Now, but that's doing it the legal way, but if you're a criminal, you're not going to have a concealed no. weapons permit. Okay, you know what? But let me let me go here and finish. Some police officers who have a bad taste in their mouth for people in general who don't like concealed carry who don't like you, maybe they don't like the law, and I hand them my concealed carry license, I fear being harassed. I feel like, are they going to harass me? Are they going to ask me to, to take my gun out and put it on the dash? Or are they going to ask me to get out of the car and frisk me? You know what I'm saying? I, I worry about that. And if my wife's in the car and somebody's, you know, doing this to me, I mean... I, I don't know. It hasn't happened to me. I haven't really heard about it happening, and God, I hope yeah. it doesn't. But it's in the back of my mind also. And I and I, I don't have a record to, that you could even pinpoint anything on. I've never been convicted of anything or done anything that would warrant it. So, you know, I, I, I look at that, and I just look at all these other issues that we're talking about that the bottom line is, I think we have, like you guys said, some rogue cops out there who feel like they're, you know, they're in the wild west and they could just pull out their gun and start shooting at people. Well, you know, you know, and they had this, they had this very same problem back in the late '60s and early '70s in Los yes. Angeles. Mm -hmm. You know, Los An Los Angeles had a had a huge problem with, you know, the the civilian population not trusting the police officers. I mean, it was it was the '60s and the early '70s. You know, free love, drugs, whatever. So, you know, the uh, the um, chief of police there decided that he was going to do something about it and he set up what are called CRB citizen review boards and these citizen review boards would sit in on officer involved shootings and they would actually get to question the officer in the officer who was who had done the, who had shot someone in the line of duty and and that seemed to ease the the tension a little bit at the time so I don't know how many uh, police departments have CRBs, if any. I mean, I don't know if they have them here or not. But it seems to me that that might be something that would help. Because, again, we're not talking about 90% of the cops. We're talking about point zero 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 one percent of the cops so, that, if, if that, that, are that are badge that. heavy. That are badge mm -hmm. heavy. Yep. If that. And we got to take a very interesting subject the other day at work, actually, me and one of my other uh, associates. And he was saying how... how it how easy it is here in Florida uh, to, to to get a gun compared to being up north. Up north, they yeah. do all these background mm -hmm. checks, but right. here in Florida, you're able to get a gun like this. No, they do a background check. Believe me, I had to go through the background check. I had to go through the the, the concealed weapons carry. You have to go through a safety class. You have to do range time. You have to fill out the form. It goes through the state of Florida to Tallahassee. They run your background. They do a complete, thorough background check. 
a federal check, everything. Mm -hmm. So they just don't hand you a concealed weapons permit. But yeah, if you I mean, pass is, everything, go ahead. And there is something to it. I mean, it is a little bit more difficult than just walking in. I mean, there used to be a three-day waiting period. I don't know if that still exists or not, or if it's longer. But yeah, there is a three. There's a, there's a three-day waiting period. There's a three-day waiting period if you don't have a concealed. The beauty of having a concealed weapons permit: I see a gun today and I want to buy it. I can buy it. I don't have to wait three days. I've proven right. you. You've got all my information. You've checked me out. You know who I am already, and that's the beauty of it. But right. you know, not to say that somebody else with a concealed weapons permit doesn't get pissed off and go buy another gun and go shoot somebody with it. You mm -hmm. know, you, you don't know. I mean, really, you don't know. But yeah. that doesn't that doesn't uh, uh, consider or have consideration for the Second Amendment right, and that's to bear arms at all times. Right. Legally. Well, and, to legally. Me, and, and, you know, to me, and, and I've debated this point, I don't know how many times, with friends of mine, but to me, the bigger issue isn't police officer involved shootings. I mean, that accounts for such a small part, a minuscule part of, of the murders that happen in this country. To me, oh, yeah, yeah. I want to I want to solve I want to solve crime in these neighborhoods. That's what I want to figure out. How do we get how do we get people not to shoot each other? I mean. Uh, seriously, I mean, here here in Jacksonville, we can't go more than more than a day without a drive by or without somebody getting killed at some apartment 90, complex. Ninety ninety percent of ninety percent of all shootings in the United States are drug related. Well, and then that tells me that that tells me we need to do something about that. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, we had we. The, the jury I sat on, the guy the guy lived in the Cleveland Arms Apartments. Cleveland Arms is in the par apartments or in the news at least once a month, if not twice. Eureka Gardens, we all know where they are. They're, I know where they are in Jacksonville. You know where they are in Orlando and Daytona. I mean, you, you know the hill quite well, I'm sure, in Jack's Beach. Oh, yeah. You know where the hill is. So, I mean, we've all got these neighborhoods. So, that to me is a bigger issue. Yeah, and... and but you know the only way, <clears throat> the only way to beat crime, as far as all these murders is, is cracking down with an iron fist. But what happens ultimately, if you can't solve the drug problem, it's if if you had if 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 you had people not doing drugs, there would be no drug problem because there would be no demand for the supply. Right. The the demand creates the supply. The demand creates the dealers. The demand creates the crime, because right. if somebody's not demanding the drug, there is no crime. Listen, Brugal brings up a good point. He says, um, "He says here they were here shooting are the cops. The cops are always out there shooting." He says, "There's been two shot in ten months in my area," and uh, he says, "They are the ones who are doing the shooting right now." Uh, he yeah. says, "What one drunk driving shot in November?" By cops. Wow. So, so as you can see, this is a lot of this is happening, you know, around the world right now. So. Well, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, it was it's, it's probably happened for many many years, but because of, due to social media's, it's really being pushed out there. More, it's it's, yeah. it's more yeah. relevant in, in, as far as what people are, are seeing because it, every, video is just exposed, mm -hmm. uh, and not just social media. Guy had his movie camera out, you know, his palm his palm recorder out, so he or his phone or. Mm -hmm. You know his uh, Go GoPro. I mean, who knows? Whatever you have on you, you can record anything you want to record. Exactly. And yeah. and well, whenever this is going down, there's usually someone that's around watching. That's changed the face. That's ahead, true, Kevin. and that's changed the face of news reporting in, in, as a whole. Exactly. I mean, we recently had a case where a, where a, a car burst into flames on one of the bridges here in town, and they were with their phones. And of course, there was outrage that somebody would get out and film four people dying in a fire in a car you know so the, it's 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 definitely changed the way we look at media it's changed the way we look at events and the fact is is that if I'm a police department I'm saying let's put body cameras on these guys and let's let the video be ours I mean listen you know, let's there are, have the accountability well I mean, there are forces there are forces in Orlando now going to the body cameras well, right now, I mean, the police cars already got you know the cameras I, in them. But they're they're going to the GoPros. They're uh, there's yeah, something I, I, like the I've GoPro. seen yeah, I've seen some of the uh, the cameras that they're starting to have now. Yeah, they're carrying Which, them I think on their person. That is awesome because. But you got to think about it too. Is that uh, yeah. is that gonna give them uh, the access to turning the camera off? No, it has to be going. They're they're, they're gonna be they're gonna be held. I don't know. 
to go the the the, the camera that they have on well, him is supposed to be. Go ahead, Kevin. Kevin, go ahead. We had about having cameras in the classroom when it came to. Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. now we can. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, good. Sir. It, it, we had the same discussion here with the teachers' union about putting cameras in the classroom, and that the argument was is that it's just as much for your protection as it is as, as it is accountability. Because when you think about it, it, when you're pulled over by a police officer, it's the police officer's word against whoever they stop. I mean, we've right. seen cases exactly. where the policeman stops the policeman stops somebody. You know. The policeman is on the news because this person is saying that the policeman called me this, or the policeman said that, or did this. Well, there's no proof because it was only the two of them. Right. And it's up to the policeman to prove he or she didn't do it. And it's the same with teachers. And, of course, the teachers ultimately voted it out because they didn't want people spying on them. But I'm like, you know what? Where the uh, If I was a cop, I would want to wear a body camera. I would want to have that camera on me anytime I make a stop, anytime I have a... a a civilian interaction anytime I'm dealing with people I'd want that sucker on so that my backside is protected so that I go home that night right because you know you go up like you said that that one instance you know you go up to that one car uh, you pull somebody over and it's somebody who pulls a gun on you well you have that body camera on you it's picking up voice it's picking up it's probably gonna pick up the car it's gonna pick up the shooter it's gonna pick up a lot of different things that you know what if you survive, at least you know they're 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 going to jail. Uh, Bruce says, Bruce says uh, you have to look at the video of the man uh, beat by nine cops after he was tased. Happened on the ninth. He says it's been on the news. He said for stealing the horse. So I'll have, have to, to look that one up. Look that see one up. Yeah. Find on that one. But you It'll know, the, here's here's the thing: when you're in the public eye, the interaction is on page one. The retraction is on page ten. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then nobody pays attention to the retraction. No. That's it's right. what's on the what's on the main page, and it kind of sucks. But you know, and, and I said this in the past before. You know, I've been stopped by a cop before who said to me, uh, "I'm pulling you over," and this is you know you know or very early in the morning, like five o'clock in the morning when I used to work with, with Disney. I got pulled over one time. They were like, "Hey, excuse me, um, your tail light is out, or not your tail light, but your your tag light is out," and I'm like, "No, it's not." And they were like, "Yeah, it's out." Can I get your license? And, you know, I try to cooperate and stuff like that, but there are cops out there who are, who are huge assholes. And it's unfortunate, yeah. but I try to cooperate and just make it as smooth as possible because I ain't trying to argue with nobody. I ain't trying to get locked up. I'm about to call Mike and say, Mike, come get me out of jail, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's that's what I did. when I, That's what I did when I was pulled over at 3 in the morning. It was like, okay, what what do you want me to do? And I'll be very happy to do it. That's why when, when the old officer said to the younger one, that's not the guy we're looking for. And the guy says, I'm going to run his license anyway. I'm like, if it makes him happy, please let him run it. I'm not going to, you know, it's it's just it's not worth it to me. It's not worth it. There is nothing worth being beaten, shot, go to jail over that I could prevent. And I think that's what gets lost in all this is that, you know, I think a lot of times some of these things could be prevented if people just had a little bit more civility and a little bit more common sense. Well, you know, there's an old adage, nothing good happens after midnight. And that's true. I mean, we've had we had a couple of Jaguar players here that had their car shot up at like three in the morning. Yeah, by yeah. some crazed ex boyfriend of the girl they were with, mm-hmm. and now the guy can't walk anymore. So you know, it happens. I mean, we had a case here where a, a guy pulls into a gas station, and there's a bunch of kids in a car, and their music is too loud. He goes over and asks them to turn it down. So instead of saying, "All right, no problem," turning it down. The, no, F you, I'm not going to do that. Uh, nothing. Uh, and then the guy walks back to his car, pulls out a gun, and shoots him. Now, it's not right, but it could have been prevented. And it wasn't a police officer. It was a private citizen who just decided he didn't like their music, and they didn't turn it down for him, so he was going to shoot him. Whereas if and they he, had turned it down, he would have driven home. Nothing would have happened. He wouldn't go to court. Kid wouldn't be dead. I don't think he was from Florida either, Kevin. Yeah, he was. He was, from, was, he was down from your area, Michael Dunn. He was that, maybe that's a, yeah, that's what it was. He, but he wasn't from Jacksonville. Yeah. No, he wasn't in Jacksonville. It was like Ormond Beach or something down yeah. down mm-hmm. south of us here. Redneck you know, Central. And then, yeah. Yeah, and I I've been to the, I go to that gas station almost twice a week. So, you know, but still, if the kids had just turned down the radio, their friend wouldn't be dead, and he so, wouldn't be in jail. So let, let me ask you guys: in the case with the whole Walter Scott uh, thing going on, of course, you know, unfortunately, the guy passed. 
uh, from the incident. Um, you know the family's going to go in. You know there's going to be some type of lawsuit. And I in, think there should be. In your eyes, how do you think the outcome is going to turn out for 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 the family and for the you know the city? Well, they I don't know, but they've already arrested they've already arrested the officer. Yeah, I and see that. And they expect yep. them to be indicted by the by the end of the month. Mm-hmm. So, and I would say if they're going to indict the guy, then they've got evidence that shows that what what he says happened isn't what ha- what happens. What so, happens, right? You know, I think. Personally, from what I saw, it didn't. You know, they were. I think he made a mistake. First off, by chasing the guy, I think he should have called in backup and said, "You know what? It ain't worth it." Yeah. You know, it's not worth it. The guy wasn't turning to shoot at him. The guy was running away, so he ran him down anyway. First off, he ignored the guy in the car who could have turned around and shot him anyway. Mm-hmm. So, right. I mean, if for nothing else, he was stupid in that respect. But well, he, he broke think, policy. He did not follow right, the policy. I think. You know, from what I saw as an outside observer, I think you know it was a bad call, and I think somebody died because of it. So now, do you think that, that the footage that the young gentleman had recorded in the situation, do you think that help that's going to help this case? I, I think I think it will to an extent, yeah, because you only have again the word of the officer against the word of a dead man, and we all know where that gets you. Well, so, I mean, I think in this case, the the video is going to help because it's not necessarily going to back up the officer's side of the story well it's good extensively will it will help the uh the victim and I, i'll tell you why because it shows the officer not in fear of his life mm-hmm. it shows the the perp running away walter scott running away yeah. his back is turned i you know like i said we can't really hear what he what he what he says to him but he you, you hear the pop 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 you shoot, you know. If anything, you shoot once. If he doesn't stop, you know, if you if your life's in danger, you shoot once. If he's coming at you, but he wasn't even doing that. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Let's. Can you pull up the footage? Go to YouTube. It's oh, on YouTube. Yeah, for me to search it right now. You should have told me earlier. I would have been able to. Look I did say something earlier, but you were busy. You gotta tell me before you know. I go on the air, you dork one. <laughs> But you know, I think I think by now anybody who's listening to the story has probably seen the footage. I mean, I, that's what I would think. Well, I, well, I, well, I hope they I hope they've uh, YouTube. It's on YouTube, and all you do is uh, if you don't know, key in Walter Scott, and uh, you can actually go Google Walter Scott, and it pops up and it goes right to YouTube for you. And I, I think the best video out there isn't necessarily the one of of the that the young man shot but i think it's the the best one i saw was the cnn analysis of the video i saw the I one you saw one, I, yeah when it, when it ripped piece was excellent piece. yeah i thought that one was excellent because to me that was you know that wasn't you looking at it getting your own opinion it was there were a lot of questions there were a lot of questions that were raised by that analysis video so i think that one might have been the best one i saw cbs had some footage on there also on, the, on that youtube mm-hmm. site I mean, you know, it's 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 like anything else. Until you have the facts of the case, you know, you can say, "Oh, the video doesn't lie," but the video doesn't give you sound. It doesn't give you exactly what happened. But I would no. say that if they're indicting this guy, then he was clearly in the wrong. And I think, you know, with my limited police knowledge, he should never have chased after the guy in the first place. And it's unfortunate because you know a lot of people went to social media. Right away, since that incident took mm-hmm. place, and of course, you know our good friend Tony. Yeah, he's out there. He's speaking yeah. his mind about the situation, but I love, there's a lot of upset people out there. Well, you know, and once again, Tony comes from a very racially charged city, uh, Chicago. Chicago, yeah, with yeah. a lot of uh, uh, racially uh, d- discriminated issues going on right now. Uh, and in in in, 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 in their case, up there, huh? In that area, just just a lot happening in that area. Well, in 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 that case, I mean, probably there's a, probably a percentage of it that is is, is warranted. That there, you know, that everybody's in the uprage and be it one, be it twenty. I mean, there shouldn't be one. There shouldn't be two. There shouldn't be three. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we're we're in a new day and age, and, and it, we're, we should be past that. But we can't control that. Like you said, you know, there's bad apples in every bushel. So, be it Chicago, be it, you know, uh, Missouri, be it Florida. It, we're yeah. going to find a bad apple every place. 
Yeah, you're gonna. F- but I think I think you're gonna find fewer of them than you think. Unfortunately, what happens in this day and age is you have too few stories about the the guy in whatever city it was with the overweight lady trying to finish the marathon, and the cop comes out of the from providing security to help her to help her make the last however long it was. You have too oh, few exactly. of those. You have, you have too few stories like the two cops that found the woman trying to live in a park. And, and brought her into a homeless shelter and provided her with food and made sure her kids had clothes. Those stories don't hit the news. Those stories don't go viral. We don't have Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton trumpeting the accomplishments of these police officers. What well, you exactly. have is you have you have a, one cop shoots one guy, and suddenly you have a national story. Mm-hmm. And, and it should be. I think in this case it should be because it does highlight the fact that there's a long way to go. But then on the flip side of that, you don't you don't, as a as a, a country, react the way that that was reacted, and and I don't want to get into Ferguson too much, but don't react that way. I mean, don't burn your own town to the ground, burning businesses of people that are in your own community, and stealing from them. That doesn't help your cause any. It doesn't win Joe Average American like me over to your cause. If no. you're peacefully protesting, walking across a bridge to protest some civil rights thing, and you're doing it peacefully. I'm going to be at your side all the time. I'm going to stand right there with you. But if you're burning people's houses and killing people and stoning them and going after cops and all, you're not going to get me on your side. Sorry. Well, you know, out of all these instances that have been happening, I haven't really been for the for the uh, so-called oh. victims, but I have been for the police officers. Look but at look at his T-shirt. Who? Uh, Iceman. I'm seeing. What's it say? Meat. I can't see. He it said, "Meat is murder. Murder, tasty, tasty murder." <laughs> <laughs> this, this week, I I got a very simple shirt. I got a Bart Simpson. Go. I wore something very, very plain tonight. Yeah, he, he's a he's a plain Jane. Actually, I wore something with pink in it. You just can't see it. Mm. But we don't we don't want to see a thong. But anyways, going back to that, I I'd like to I'd like to say that. This one instance, this this one instance, mm-hmm. after watching the videos and everything, I could out without without a doubt in my mind and in in my opinion and you know say that I I really believe that the cop was not in the right. Yeah. This and, time. And yeah, I, I don't think it was in the right yeah. at all. And I you know I usually give it a lot of thought as far as before I'm going to say a cop is in the wrong because for the for the bad apples out there, I still want to have police around and and I think 99 percent of them are good in what they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. I mean, the majority of cops that I've ever met, with the exception of the one that pulled me over, have been very nice men and women. You know, so, I, and again, it's all in, it's it's like anybody else you meet in society. If you deal with them a certain way, don't expect them to be dealing with you in, right. in a kind manner. So, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you're going to deal with them like a jerk, then and they when they deal like a jerk with you, don't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, before we go on with the show, there's something else I want to talk about that's I think is very, very important that's coming up real soon. Uh, but uh, hey, hey, Brew, I was trying to add um, Iceman as a mod, but for some reason I was getting an error. So if you can mod him for me, that would be awesome. Thanks. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. The election 2016 is coming up, mm-hmm. and there's been a lot of people going out, com- finally coming out and saying, I'm running for president, but one that caught me, which I wasn't really surprised too much, but Miss Hillary Clinton is running for president. You, what do you mean? You're surprised? I'm not surprised. Oh. Pay attention. She's been saying she was going to run since uh, she bowed down to Obama. No, so, by the way, I, I, I shared, uh, 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 Kevin, if you see it, a share I shared with Obama in a video of him talking yeah, I about. I haven't seen it yet, but it's on my list of things to watch. Yeah, I shared Kevin, uh, DJ Friction if you haven't get a chance to look at it. So the whole election thing going on, what are your thoughts about Miss Hillary Clinton running uh, for this coming uh, presidential race? I'm not surprised. I think that you know, I'm not really surprised that she's running. I mean, personally, I would love to see a woman president, just not her. Um, okay, so why? Uh, hold on. Why wouldn't you want to see her as president? Bill Clinton, did, okay, did you think Bill Clinton did a good job as president? 
Well, when you compare Bill Clinton to this current moron, yeah, I think Bill Clinton did a fantastic job. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, truthfully, if I look, if I, this is the way I'm going to judge a president. If I look at my bank account from when they started their presidency to the end, Bill Clinton was a wonderful president. I made awesome a lot president. of money. I made a lot of money. I did really well with my stocks. I did really well with my investments. George Bush comes along. I still did pretty good because I was careful when the market went south. But a lot of that had to do with something else that happened in the Clinton administration. But it wasn't the best policy choice, but it made sense at the time. You know, he financed the debt with short-term mm -hmm. bonds, which came due during the Bush administration. And those had to be paid off, which in led to a little bit of the recession. But there was some Bush policy. Well, too. when the market crashed this, and 911 hit, I lost all my 401k. Our well, see, and, I, and, and I, was pre I was prepared for that. I was prepared for that. I, I, watched, I watched the trends. I saw what was happening. I, I was prepared for exactly, not 911, but I was prepared for you know a market downturn this guy I've had to monitor my investments more carefully now I've made a, a pretty good amount of money in the last year and a half because the market's been going like crazy but I don't expect it to last and, and I don't expect it to last for a lot of different reasons but not the least of which is we're coming up on an election year but I wouldn't want Hillary Clinton for a lot of different reasons first off I think that out of the two of them Bill wasn't smart enough to be as sneaky as she is I think she's very <laughs> sneaky. I think she's very secretive. I think she's uh, underhanded. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bring the Benghazi thing up because I don't really want to go there. But I just don't. I just don't trust her. There's a big trust issue. But having said that, DJ, I'm not really thrilled by anybody who's announced right now because I I have certain beliefs and none of them really share what I believe in. So I'm not really thrilled by Rubio, Paul, Clinton, Christie, any of them. Okay, amen to that. Hey, we're starting. We're stirring the pot because I'm going to Facebook right now, and people are responding to what we're talking about here. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. This comes from Jay Wilson. It says the fault lies on both sides. He says I'm going to start with Michael Slag Slager, Slager, the officer. According to the city of North Charleston, uh, Charleston's website for the police, there were seven organizations, organizational values. He broke the first four. Uh, not just with Walter Scott. Yes, in August of 2014, he engaged in uh, excessive force with an unarmed motorist. Now, to Walter Scott, he should not have run, like you guys said. He should not have uh, just because it may show guilt, which you brought up. Mm -hmm. uh, but he ought to have known better as a trained member of the armed uh, services. Uh, in addition, Walter Scott should have known better as a member of the black community. Most black males are taught this as part of the quote-unquote talk yes, uh, uh, when on the streets, especially when the deals with the police. So, as said before, it is both of their faults, but thankfully Michael Slager uh, can do no more damage as a policeman in North Charleston. Exactly. And I agree with that. I agree with that. Exactly. 100%. So, uh, let me go back down. Now, uh, while you're going back, Hillary Clinton is not Clintonomics. Clintonomics came from Bill Clinton and his cabinet. Totally different than what Hillary is uh, in inducing. Uh, she is a socialistic nightmare getting ready to happen. She's yeah. She's got a lot of Obama's views. Uh, and yeah. she's got a lot of her own views. Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid to say it. I am a Republican. I don't care what anybody thinks about that. Uh but Hillary lost my vote when she started Obamacare, when she let uh, Senator Harry uh, Reid uh, run rampant with this bill and, and, and create Obamacare, as it's called. Mm -hmm. I wrote a 15, not 15, a 21-page uh, thesis term paper on Obamacare before Obamacare was ever Obamacare, when it was the Harry Reid bill. There's over... 2,500 pages to that bill. And, and no one's read it. And no one's read Well, I read a lot of it. And numerous amendments that were made afterwards. And I wrote and, and, and supported and backed up everything that they said now about socialized medicine and socialized health care. What would happen, what, what was going to happen in my view, and mm -hmm. a lot of it has already taken place. Well, uh, here's, here's something interesting about Obamacare. I just had my taxes done last week. 
and you know you're supposed to have health care insurance when you file your taxes or you're going to have yep. some sort of penalty right right yep. so i so i go into my accountant and my accountant is doing my taxes and he says to me he says do you have health care and i said yes and i went to pull out my card and he goes oh we don't need to see that and i said what do you mean you don't need to see it how do you know i have health care he goes you told me i'm like you got to be kidding me so all i have to do is say yes even if i don't have health care and i don't get taxed he goes that's correct and i said wow and he goes Here's another thing. He says, the, that's why they want you to sign up through the exchange so that they can verify you have it. And I said, oh, all right. So that was pretty interesting. But, uh, you know, how, here's, how about this? Uh, Laura Bush is upset with her mother-in-law, Barbara Bush, because Barbara Bush said that she doesn't think Jeb should run for president because she thinks America is tired of the Bushes. What do you think of that? I'm tired of the Bushes, too. I, I think uh, I actually I actually think she's right. Well, I would have to agree. I you know as a teacher I don't much care for Jeb Bush because of what he did to the education in the state of Florida. But you know, I, like I said before, I'm not really thrilled with any of them. I'm not really thrilled with with Marco Rubio. I don't really like him. I'm not really thrilled with what it, which Paul is it Rand or Ron? I don't know. Whichever Paul it is, I'm not real thrilled with him either. And of it's course, Rand, I don't much. Rand. Care. Rand Paul it's, and it's Rand. I like I like Rick Perry. Rick Perry from Texas. Mm-hmm. I don't think he'll win. I don't think he takes himself seriously enough. But I, I think he's got a good a lot of good views as far as uh, what what see, we need to do. See, the thing that gets me is there's people who are running trying to run for president don't have enough experience to even try to run for president. No, actually, a governor has more experience than most people. Most pre- no, really. Uh, they're running. They're running a U.S. state. There's a lot yeah. of responsibility when it comes to running a U.S. state. Okay, so uh, Brew Monkey, if you, if you had to go and vote for somebody that's running for president, who would you choose? Because right now, everybody that's running for 2016, none, none of them belong in office. I have to agree with Iceman 100 percent on that. Everybody who's running, there's no way in hell. I would have put so, them in office. That's why I don't so, vote. You're going to have some dark horses come out there and, and, and announce their candidacy pretty soon. But well, I mean, you, you and and I took a politics class in, in at UNF, and we talked about it was during a presidential election, and we t- it was the Gore Bush election, and we talked about when you have to start talking about running, and really, this is right now when you're going to start announcing because you got to have 18 months of solid fundraising because the campaign is going to cost you an arm and a leg. We've had the last three elections have been successively the most expensive elections in U.S. history, and this is after campaign finance reform. So, you know, who out there, who can you think of out there right now would be qualified? I mean, I don't necessarily buy the argument that you have to be a governor or that I think a governor helps. I don't think you... And I don't necessarily buy the idea that you have to be a politician. Did you uh, did you see the comment sad. that that Hillary's gonna her her bill is gonna be a two billion dollar uh, run, basically two fifty for every American? What a waste of money, Bo- well, uh, voter. And, and you know what? It, it would probably be better if she gave every American two hundred and fifty dollars and stimulate the blasted economy. I mean, no, every one of the one every vote, every one Dude, of the you know what you can do with that kind of money? Two fifty a vote. Donated, freaking help. People who are in need donate to an uh, uh, organization. Running, is, she's not going to win. I, I'll tell you who I want to run. You're not, you're not qualified. Huh? You're not qualified. No, He's I got too run. many skeletons in his closet <laughs> anyway. Yeah, exactly. I would never run for president. Uh, the, uh, the person I would like to see run is, like I said, a dark horse. I think there's... A dark horse. I, I would just like to see a dark horse come out of the closet all of a sudden and say, "I'm running for president, and this is why." I want to see somebody who actually has a a conviction running, who who states what they why they want to run, not what everybody wants to hear, and back it up and and run on that ticket and and and, and do something like that. Because I'm tired of. Go ahead, Kevin. I'm just, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, uh, I'm tired of hearing everybody's. Say what they 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 know their constituents want to hear. And unfortunately, that's politics. But I would like to see something change. Yeah, see, that's what I was about to say. That's the nature of politics. Because when you're running, 
when you're in the primary phase, you have to pander to the people who are going to vote for you right. or who are, who are your constituencies. So if you're a Republican, you have to stay conservative. You can't be ultra-conservative because you'll alienate some that are moderately conservative. So you have to stay conservative. But then when you get into the general election, then you have to come more toward the middle. And that's, that's what Obama did effectively. And as politicians go, he and Bill Clinton are probably two of the best politicians I have ever seen at, at coming to the middle and speaking to a vast market of, of potential voters. Doesn't mean they're telling the truth, but they're, they were two of the best at playing the political game. And that's where I think the Republican Party has fallen down because they've tried to be the party that tells you almost somewhat like it is and they have done a very poor job of coming to the middle and a very poor job of speaking to the masses whereas well, the democrats I, say i'll speak well enough that you'll believe me Listen, i think i think that and i'll let you speak dj i think the republican that will win the republican nomination will be that person who does come to the middle who is able to cross uh sides with the democratic party and actually be able to accomplish something for the country not for the, the that specific agenda but who is doing what's right for the country and the people and that's what we need listen i'm just gonna be happy that unfortunately this is gonna be kind of sad to say but i'm just gonna be happy that obama's gonna be out of office and i'll be honest with you many many years ago when he ran i was kind of excited to have okay. somebody different yeah, you and everybody who voted for him were now how many people are still on that bandwagon listen i didn't vote for him but i was excited to see something new you know, in office, and unfortunately, now it's come to the point where I just wanted it to be over with. I, don't, I want somebody who's actually going to do something. This well, is what the election was all about, right here. Change that yeah. word right there is what nailed the election twice for Obama. Mm -hmm. Change, and there was no change to take place. So change, yeah, change for the worse. So for the do better. you do you guys see since Obama's been in office, do you see things have gotten worse, or do you have seen them got a little bit better? Have you been it to the grocery on, store lately? Yeah, prices are going up because companies that didn't get the opt-out clause from Obamacare are now having to charge more. I mean, geez and Pete, everything in, in, under the sun with the exception of gasoline lately seems to be going up in prices. And I have never seen a country more divided than I, than I in my life. Never. At any point have I seen such a vitriolic division in the United States. Wow, I worked in vitriolic tonight. Yeah, five points. Okay. Hey... I do have something good to end this show with. Has anybody ever heard of the company called Gravity? No. MSN had a. Uh, had Hold on, before you get before you get there, I just want to say this real quick. Uh, Sandy Big Six uh, says about Hillary Clinton in office. She says yuck. Shakira says as the Spice Girls once said, "Girl power." Girl power. Okay. Yeah. Well, here here you go. Before we get too far, let me give you a rundown of who is running. Who, as of right now, is running? The Democrats have one candidate, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Mm. The Republicans have three. They have Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, and Marco Rubio. Now, there are probables on both sides. The probables on the Democratic side are Martin O'Malley, who is a former governor of Maryland, Jim Webb, a former U.S. senator, and Lincoln Chafee, who is the former governor of Rhode Island. Now, on the Republican side, we have Jeb Bush, who was the former governor of, Calif of uh, Florida, we have Scott Walker, who's the governor of Wisconsin. Very good Chris one. Christ, Chris Christie, who's the governor of New Jersey. Mike Huckabee, who is formerly the Arkansas governor. Rick Santorum, who was a former senator. Rick Perry, who was a former governor of Texas. Bobby Jindal, who is currently the Louisiana governor. Carly Fiorina, who is a business executive. And she's quite cute, by the way. Mm -hmm. and then yeah, that's her. Then there's Ben Carson, who is a retired neurosurgeon. By the way, you need and to get who, up the house more. Yeah, and who is not <laughs> running? Well, the picture I'm looking at is pretty attractive, actually. Um, the persons who are not running are... Uh, Michael Romney. Benson? <laughs> Mitt, Rom Mitt Romney is not running. Elizabeth Warren is not running. And it looks like Joe Biden will not be running. Oh, thank and you, there is, Lord. There is one current independent named Bernard Sanders, who is a United oh, States senator, who is thinking about running. I don't even know who he is. And this is I don't this either, is so... There's your I, rundown. If I had to announce a ticket, I would say Walker, Perry, either or. Scott Walker out of uh, Wisconsin is a really, really good, very, very good economist. 
Oh, uh, you were gonna mention something about the gravity. Sorry, gravity I'm gonna company. Off. Gravity is a company that processes credit cards to small independent businesses. Mm-hmm. The CEO and president of uh, Gravity, and they're out of Seattle, Washington, just announced that he will be cutting his one million dollar salary, uh, annual salary, to create equality throughout his company. He has 120 employees. He's going to cut his salary to seventy thousand and level all his employees who are in the forty to forty plus thousand range mm-hmm. up to the seventy thousand dollars. So basically, just about everybody in this company, including himself, will be making well, in the, hot in damn! The range Somebody's of, asking to do something right of seventy thousand dollars. So he said, not everybody. He said, but that person who who's sec, uh, is the receptionist at the desk is going to be making a living that will warrant being able to have things to be able to have. Uh, stuff for their kids, not have to worry about working payday to payday. And he says, and by the way, all my employees have health insurance and health care. Where's this? Where's this up? In Seattle, Washington. I'm about to move to Seattle. They do the they do the pro <laughs> well they do the processing for the credit card companies. You know, small like you know neighborhood businesses and stuff yeah. like that. They do all their credit card processing. And uh, he said the company's quite lucrative. And what he's going to do is he's going to roll. About seventy percent of the uh, of the earnings of the fiscal fiscal profit into their salaries every year and in, into programs for them. Gotcha. He's he's also privately held. He doesn't yeah. have to answer to he doesn't have to answer to shareholders. He doesn't have to answer to a uh, a board. So he can do that, and I think he, that's fine. And and because he chooses to, because he could with 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 the size of his company now, he could go yeah uh, corporate. I mean, he could. I mean. Uh, Create stock he, and go uh, national, and uh, he he could, but that creates a whole new. That's that another creates entity. a whole new barrel of worms. I, I recently I know of a company here in Jacksonville who was publicly traded, and they decided to go back internal and they bought out all their shareholders <clears> because it was a real pain in the rear end to have to answer to a board of directors and and shareholders, and they were able to streamline their profits, streamline what they. And they pay a higher wage than most of the companies here in Jacksonville. So well, this guy has quite well for themselves. Oh, of course, but this guy hasn't went national as far as his company goes. Not just publicly held, but I'm saying nationally yeah. as far as his, his his database of customers. Yeah. So well, and I think I think it's good. I think that's you know, personally, my belief about small businesses is that they're the backbone of the American economy. Definitely, because it's it's not the Fortune 500 companies that that drive employment. It's the it's the mom and pop shop, you know. It's the startup gravity. I mean, we have a local company, a local business here in town that was crowdfunded. It's called Video Game Rescue, and they, the guy, crowdfunded his whole thing, and he filled a niche: antique video games. That well, antique being from when I was, you know, younger. Uh, he filled a niche. From he the found 1940s. A, you are antique. <laughs> yeah, he found he found a niche and he filled it, you know, and he filled it through crowdfunding. And you know it's it's the nature of the way business is going. We had the big one spark event here in Jacksonville, where entrepreneurs got to show off their business models for the public, and the public could invest in these through crowdfunding. So I mean, it's a small business. It's not the it's not the Bank of America that drives the economy. It's you know the Bank of Jacksonville. It's a five bank bank that you know employs local people and keeps the money local, and that's where it's going to stay. And that's what this company in Seattle's doing. Yeah, awesome. that's what it needs to be. Yeah. All right, so we're about to run out of some time here, so I want to go ahead and get our sponsors in for the show uh, this evening. So I'm going to go ahead and let uh, whoever wants to do the iHeart sponsor, you can guys can go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll go from there. So the weekly rundown is available on iHeart Radio, so tune in to iHeart Radio and listen to 102.dlg Radio. We have lots of broadcasts throughout the week. DJ, for DJ Friction is always on the air, and you can always find him on iHeart Radio. Love your radio again with iHeartRadio. iTunes. You can find us on 102DLG Radio on iTunes. Listen to our show every week, along with many, many other shows out there. Uh, iHeart, iTunes, uh, just about every one of our uh, sponsors do carry. I do. I definitely got to show some love right now to our good friends uh, at JustCastLive.tv. Because they show us a lot of love, and I definitely got to show them a lot of love. They've been a huge supporter of our program. We've been with them probably three months or so, and uh, they've been the most probably our biggest supporter right now. Our yeah, one of our major supporters, video wise, yeah. you know, for video broadcasting, they're amazing. If you guys haven't had the opportunity yet 
uh, to check out JustCastLive.tv, please go on over. It's free to join. They got a tons and tons of broadcasts. They got tons of radio broadcasters who come up there who who got some amazing stuff. You got some people just hanging out on video as well. The thing that makes Just Cast Live unique is the fact not only can you chat in the chat rooms, but you can chat live via video webcam during our broadcast. Right. Which is freaking amazing. So thank you to Just Cast Live. Uh, dot TV for your support and continued support of our program. Last but not least, I gotta thank our new uh, our, our, Tune in. our new partners. Uh, Tune in. You can now catch us live on Tune In Radio each and every single week. Every time we broadcast, just look us up under 102.point DLG Radio Orlando, and uh, we are so honored and so thankful. We're hitting the big major radio program uh, network. Well, what I want to I want I want our listeners to understand that. What what you're now listening to, the, the the whole the whole venue called Internet Radio, is growing and growing and growing. It is. And when you go on to one of these sites and you're able to look up and, and t- you know just pull up certain things and you can see all the different Internet Radio shows going on all these sites that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's enormous. Uh, I'm at work. I wanna I wanna promo my show to my my coworkers. I pull it right up on a a big screen TV and I've got it going for them and they're like wow and I'm like yep and that's us and that's other people and I'm pulling up all the different shows well Tony show up for them so they could see that mm-hmm. uh, another show came up that uh, Chris top you know stuff like that mm-hmm. and, and I pulled this stuff up so they could see that hey just go to internet radio iHeart iTunes just cast now tune in and 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 you can see all this and it costs you nothing Exactly. You know, and people don't realize that these days, internet radio is where it's at. And we've been proud. Listen, we're heading our five-year anniversary. We're going to be celebrating our five-year five year anniversary on May 2nd, which falls on a Saturday evening. So you guys will be able to tune in live uh, for our, our very special broadcast. We'll be broadcasting from 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time all the way through Sunday, the following day. We're going to be celebrating not only a five-year anniversary, the professor and uh, Kevin the X-Men Tapey will be joining us live on the air. But we're also going to be celebrating my 39th birthday. So yeah, 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 feel yeah, free yeah. to you know, show some love. But you know the beauty of it is, true, the true beauty of it is is yeah. all these sponsors that we, we are now on board with are the conglomerates basically of Listen, the we, internet we were, radio hosts. We, we were yeah. a little, little pea, and now we're growing to be this big pod. You know, we're, we're growing. You know, it took us a lot to get into iHeartRadio. When you, when you think about it, we're over a half a million listeners. Worldwide. worldwide. I'm, I'm over 12 networks. That, that that view our show or or listen to our show mm-hmm. and that's worldwide that's that and once again the beauty of it is it's not in our hometown it's not in the next state we're broadcasting worldwide it's worldwide and listen I, and I got to take a moment and thank my 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 crew members here I got to thank uh, Mike and I got to thank the Iceman Kevin Tapey because without these guys there would be, I mean, yeah, you know, I've been doing the show for years by myself, and I brought other people on throughout the years. Some lasted, some some couldn't handle the craziness of what we do here on the, on the program. But you know, overall, these guys here is what what makes us tick every single day. And uh, of course, uh, Brew Monkey says, uh, of course, we're also broadcasting our BC Canada. Canada, so. Canada. I mean, also, I mean, like I said, worldwide. But you know, DJ, that goes that goes back to you also. I mean, you gave us both the opportunity to come onto this uh, channel and, and broadcast with you, and, and, and basically what the hell introduced was I us thinking? to it. And, <laughs> you know, even even Kevin, you know, I, I got you know, you said you know anybody out there, and I I, I had always thought about Kevin in that in that light, and, and got him on here, and I think Kevin's now starting to have fun and feeling like he's a part of the show. You can tell by uh, his his demeanor uh, demeanor now, and 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 how he. Uh, is confident and his confidence is growing every week. I, I can see he's getting more vocal and more vocal and more vocal. Yeah, well, most definitely, he's become a part of the girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look, I look forward to Tuesdays every week. I enjoy it. I've had a couple of my friends who listen to the show and and have talked about it, and, and you know, it's interesting. They they like it. Listen, and, and they're and they're relatively new to this whole internet radio thing because I had a couple friends say, "I'm in the car and I can't listen to you." I'm like, uh, "Duh, yes, you can. here's what you need. Here's what you need to do." So I talked. There is an getting, app. <laughs> getting getting the app and you know being able to listen to the show, and now they listen to it in the car. So it, it's a good thing. Exactly, and you listen. We got 
many other plans and things that we got coming soon, and we're just going to take it one day at a time. And really, if you really want to, uh, um, to your friends, Kevin, that is, if you really want to feel like you're listening to in your car on your actual radio, you can plug your iPod in, or if it's yep. uh, if you have a UConnect, and run that well, app right some, through it. Some vehicles have iHeartRadio in it, and some cars have the TuneIn uh, app to it, so you can right. actually listen some right do, on some your car. Vehicle, exactly. So. That's right. And if you drive a, if you drive an older car, they can put in what's called an FM modulator that allows you to uh, have a station dedicated into your car to your aux in line. And that's what I have for my satellite radio is I have a, an aux in line, mm -hmm. and that's how I listen to it in my 06 Pilot because it doesn't have XM radio. The one I could have bought did, but oh well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but anyway, so and I, I'm impressed, DJ. You made it two hours. You weren't sure you were going to make it the two hours, I but know, they kind of well, just flew by. Well, I wasn't going to let them uh, not last two hours. Well, listen, baby, somebody has to last two hours in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> somebody has to keep it going. Shakira, uh, don't start with my girl. Okay. Put 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 him on the carpet. See who lasts two hours. Uh, um, oh, uh, he says you could buy. He says for fourteen dollars FM transmitter for your car. Yep, which you could pick yeah, it up. Can. Transmitter can. Those, are, those those work all right. I had one for my satellite radio. It worked okay, but I put in. I only spent like one hundred and twenty US to put in an FM modulator, and it works great. And I can use it with my iPod. I can use it with anything that that has an aux cable to it. Awesome. Hey, listen, guys, it's, girls, it's it's about to be over. We're about, yeah. to, we're about to be gone. I'm not going to see you guys for a whole week. It's going to be sad. You got to enjoy yourself. I'm going to send you the links for the webcam so that you can, uh, so that we can check those out while you're gone. Hey, listen, I'm looking forward to my uh, my trip to uh, to the Bahamas. I'll see you guys in a week. And again, thank you guys so freaking much. I love you guys. And uh, with that being said, you guys got any final words before we head out of here? Just stay yeah, safe have out a good, there. That's all. Have a good, good have a good safe uh, cruise. Exactly. Right. Till next time, y'all. I'm DJ Friction. Professor. Nice man. I will see you guys soon. Thank you guys. Much love. Thank you. A very special thank you to Brew Monkey for hanging out with us and being our mod uh, administrator over at the uh, chat. We'll see you guys soon. And again, thank you so much to tune in for your support and to continue to support and finally allowing us to be crazy on your damn network. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Much love, y'all. And uh, be easy, baby. Out. Peace. It's time for a new promo. I need somebody really important within the walls of Spreaker. Someone who stands out. Maybe has a little pool. Oh, hey, Don. You're listening to the King of All Dorks, broadcasting from his lavish studio apartment in Clarksville, Tennessee. With an ocean view. This is Don Landworth. Join us on the Kristoff program in the chat on Spreaker.com. Oh, that was great, Don. But do you have any ideas on who I could get from Spreaker to help me do a promo? Somebody really important. This is Donald Landworth, the free COO. Hey, Don, are you okay? Join me and my friends in the chat on the Chris Top program on Spreaker.com. The Chris Top program burns more calories than setting a fat kid on fire. What's up, guys? DJ Friction here to remind you, if you really enjoy what we do here at 102.DLG Radio, take the time to support our program by going over to our official website www.102dlgradioorlando.com and donate today that's right some of y'all going over and donate today and show your love for the show y'all and we'll keep doing what we do here much love